All right, class, first off, as always, good day. I'm glad you're here. So today's lesson, we're going to be talking about the Constitutional Convention. We've talked about the uh, Declaration of Independence. We talked about the Articles of Confederation and how bad that was. Now we're going to look at the Constitution, what it took to get this thing going, what uh, things did they, the convention agree on, disagree on, and one particular agreement that led to a very controversial thing that would eventually separate our country into two. Okay. So let's go ahead and get to the objectives. So there we are. We're going to analyze the importance of creating a better form of government instead of the articles. We're going to examine the important factors of the Constitution. And we're going to create an argument on whether politics is really meant for everyone. Or is there a specific group that politics is mainly for, you know? So let's go ahead and go to your warm-up. All right, so here is your warm-up picture. Now, I don't want to give it away. If, unless you have uh, U.S. history, you may already know what this is or what it's trying to say. But my question to you is this. What do you think this artist is trying to say about this particular agreement in our Constitution? So you might notice there's a distinction between the guys up on top and the guys below. Um, so look at their facial expressions, right? And you might notice that one group of those guys, um, there's something wrong, something missing. Okay, so... You try to figure out what that is. And again, if you have me for U.S. history, you're going to probably get this because we just talked about this last week. Okay, so go ahead, pause the video, write your response. I know this one's a little bit difficult, but the warm up I had before was actually more difficult. I kind of felt it was kind of harder for you to explain that one than this one. Okay, so. Try to break it down. Try to figure out what is the meaning of this. Okay. So pause the video because we're moving on in three, two, one. All right. So May 25th, 1787, the Constitutional Convention begins. Every state except Rhode Island sends delegates to represent them and their interests. Because remember, some states are bigger than others. Some are smaller. Um, some states, they have a lot of uh, resources. Some don't, you know. Uh, so every, they're trying to watch out for their best interest. And they're trying to figure out what's best for their state as well as the country. So in total, there were 55 delegates that went. And there were several men who were very um, noteworthy at this meeting. Like, for example, George Washington, he was there. Benjamin Franklin, world-renowned, world-known man, was there. Uh, James Madison, John Adams, John Hancock, Samuel uh, Adams. Yes, the guy who's named after a beer. Yes, he was a real person, and yes, he was a brewer. Okay? Uh, I get that question every year, like, the beer guy? There's a, there's a beer named after a guy. Yeah, I know. Uh, Patrick Henry, another very famous guy. He was there. Okay. Now, there were several things that all the delegates agreed on. All 55 of them, basically, they could agree on certain things. Number one, they needed somebody to lead this group. Somebody to, you know, make sure that everyone was following the, the rules, um, not, you know, being a bunch of jerks, not trying to do some shady stuff. And everyone basically turned around and looked and at George Washington. Because everyone respected George Washington. And if he was to say, you guys need to stop fooling around. Y'all need to stop doing this and that. They know people would listen because they respected him. So George Washington stood up and basically said, yeah, okay, I'll, uh, I'll be the presiding officer over this whole meeting. Okay. The other thing they agreed on is each state would get one vote. Even though one state might have like 10 delegates, no. You guys all have to agree 
to for your state to cast their vote for yes or no on something. Um, a simple majority vote of those pr uh, states present would make the decision. Okay, no meeting. This is an interesting one. No meeting could be held unless seven of the thirteen states were involved. So it has to be a majority of the states. So if there was a, a little group meeting on another side of the building, you know, and there's only four of those states, you know, they would tell Washington, hey, there's a little group meeting over here. You know, and Washington would go to over, hey, guys, you know the rules. Seven states, you guys are only four. Break it up. You know. The other thing is the public and the press were not allowed inside the convention. They didn't want nobody from the press or the public to be there and then they'd be like spreading things like, oh, I heard we're going to have this. I heard we're going to have that. You know, no, because again, it was not finalized. It was not um, put on paper yet. It's just discussions that would be happening first. And they didn't want people getting too happy or too mad about something and then causing a panic or, you know, causing people to cheer when they weren't going to put that in. And then you just cause a whole mess of stuff. The last part was, there's no saving the, the Articles Confederation. There's no point of holding on to it and saying, let's try to save this and try to preserve it and let's use a you know a majority of this. No, it sucked. It was horrible. It basically destroyed our country. Get rid of it. Let's start new. Okay. Another thing, they favored uh, the idea of a limited and representative government okay so yes the government should be powerful but not like a king powerful you know so they're like yeah we don't want that but the government should have some power also the powers of the national government should be divided between three branches legislative executive judicial okay and lastly Again, the national government, the central government, should be strengthened. It should have some power. Again, not all powerful, you know, where it tramples on states' rights and, and individual rights. But it should have some teeth. Like I give you the example from last lesson. The Article of Confederation was like a baby with no teeth, trying to collect taxes, trying to make people follow laws, but they couldn't do it because they had no power. You know, they couldn't force people paying taxes or uh, following laws. So they were like a baby with no teeth trying to bite your finger. Now they're saying, give them teeth. Give the government some teeth. And that way people feel the pinch. Okay. Now, the Virginia plan was based off three principles. Okay. One, that a strong national government legislator would be in two, brand, uh, two chambers, so two houses, a strong national executive would be chosen by the national legislature, so Congress would pick the president, not the voters, and a national ju uh, judiciary to be appointed by legislature. So the judges and the courts would be appointed by Congress. So Congress would be very powerful. Now, the thing is, small states didn't like this plan because it gave a lot of power to big states because big states would have a lot of people in rep the legislature in congress because why they represent more people so they would have a lot of power and then if they wanted something they could easily have their delegates and their congressmen vote for something and then the small states even if they united couldn't fight back one large state let alone three or four so they didn't like that plan. The New Jersey plan, this is another plan, it called for a unicameral, so only one house, and one vote in each state. Now, Congress wouldn't have enough power to uh, collect taxes and regulate trade, so the Congress would have some teeth, and the president would be weaker, the executive branch would be weaker, and that the person would be elected by Congress. So Congress would, again, have the power to choose the president. The National Judiciary Branch, which would be appointed by the executive. So the president, the only president, uh, power they would really have that meant something 
was that they could uh, appoint judges, especially in the Supreme Court. And this plan was quickly shot down. It was like people were kind of like, eh, this one sucks. Who wrote this? New Jersey? Get out of here with this. You know? And then this is where some people started getting kind of angry. So small states were like, well, we kind of like that plan because it really helped us. So why are you getting mad? Why are you shooting this thing down for? And so big states and small states started fighting each other. You know, because again, they're trying to get what's best for their state, you know, and then the government, what's best for the government as a whole. Um, and then each side was basically saying, oh, man, you're just stalling. You're you're the, you're being unreasonable. You're not thinking about the people. You know, you're just thinking about yourselves, you know, or you, know, you are just thinking about like you guys and then you your people in your state would have more power because, you know, you're small. We're large. You have a thousand people. We have 10,000 people. And you want the same type of power? How is that right? You know, so they were just clamoring back and forth at each other. So this guy right here, that's Roger Sherman. He's from Connecticut. And basically he says, wait, 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 guys, I have a plan. Okay. So here's the thing. Just follow along with me. We'll make Congress a bicameral. So two houses. One house will be the House of Representatives. Now, how does the state get its power from there? Population. So this is what's going to make the large states happy. Saying, the more people you have, the more powerful your state is. Okay? And now, small states are getting upset. And he's like, wait, wait, wait. I got something for you guys, too. So hold on. In the other house, the Senate, each state will get two senators. Okay? And... If anything tries to pass through Congress, both houses have to agree. So if there's something, a law that really going to help big states, but small states say, no, it's going to hurt us, they can stop it in the Senate. Because again, every state is equal in the Senate. No matter how big or small you are, you have two senators. And that will shut down anything that small states don't like. So both sides have to agree in order for a law to pass. Fair. And they're like, well, that is actually a pretty good plan. And on top of that, eligible voters in each state would elect the members of the House of Representatives. So the people in the state will choose who they want to represent them in the House of Representatives. But the state legislature would be chosen, uh, would choose their senators. So your local congressman inside your state would choose the senators, and then your senators would go to Washington and be in the Senate. Now, both sides were like, wow, this is a pretty good plan. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. You're happy, we're happy, and we do have to agree and compromise. So, yeah, this is a pretty good plan. And this became known as the Great Compromise or the Connecticut Compromise. Now, sadly, like a lot of things in history, when somebody does something they, they believe is for the best, for the good of people, a lot of times it ends up going bad. And that's what happened here. The Great Compromise sparked a new controversy. Because remember, in the House of Representatives, a state gets more power by how many people they have. Now, some states had a lot of people, but they really didn't count them at that time. Because a lot of those people were slaves. So now you've got a new problem. Because some states say no, slaves should be free. And they, some of the states say no, uh, their should, slavery should be around. Now the slave states, um, they do something that people nowadays, when I, especially in class when I explain this, they're like, well that sounds right, that sounds good, that's how it should be. The thing is, slave states felt that slaves should be counted as a whole person. All right. Now, that does sound good, right? Uh, as a person, a slave should be seen as a person. But here's the problem. They saw them as a person, but they didn't treat them like a person. They didn't have, a slave did not have the rights as a white man. So it's like you want to count them. You want to, you want to the the 
the state. You want the government to see them as a person, but you don't treat them like a person. They're not free. They don't have rights as a people. And that's where the anti-slavery states were like, they shouldn't count as people because they don't have rights. They don't have freedom. So they shouldn't be counted as people. So I know it's kind of like a mind little twist. You have to flip it around, you know, but yeah. Slave states wanted slaves to be counted as a whole person, whereas uh, anti-slavery states said, no, they should not count as a people. And this is where the fighting began. Again, between now, slavery and anti-slavery states, and they're going at it. And again, you have to remember, during this time, our government is, our country is still rolling. There's still things happening, and our money is being worthless. Uh, trade is horrible. You know, we owe so much money now more than it did before, like a month before, and it's things are getting bad. So Washington and some other people were like, hey, guys, we have to come to an agreement here. What do we count slaves as? And they said, okay, how about 25%? No, 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 75%. How about 40? No, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, you know. 70%. And they basically came to an agreement on three-fifths, which is 60%. Okay. And they said, okay. So if you remember the warm-up picture, you saw those five guys up on top and those three guys on the bottom and the other two were kind of blank. That's what it meant. Five white guys. All right. A slave, only three slaves would count. So for every five slaves, only three would truly be counted. Okay. Now, part of the agreement was this. Uh, they couldn't ban the slave trade until 1808 or impose high taxes on imported uh, slaves. Okay. So they made that agreement. So it's in the Constitution. But here's a little fun fact. The word slave does not appear in the Constitution. It does not. If you look up the 13th Amendment, the abolishment of slavery, that's the only time the word slave comes out. Yeah. So if you look up the Three-Fifths Compromise, it, will say, it won't say slave. They don't use that word. Okay. So that's a little fun fact. It's not until they mention that they, they basically say slavery is done with in this country. That's the first time that the word slave is used. And that's not until, uh, was that 1865? So like 80 years later, 90 years later. Now, here's another thing too. The Constitution does state under Article 4, Section 2, a person charged in any state with treason, felony, or other crime who shall flee from justice and be found in another state shall on demand of the executive authority of the state from which he fled be delivered up to be removed to the state during uh, having jurisdiction of the crime. So what does that mean? Basically, if someone commits a crime and they go to another state, the person, you know, the officers and some of that, they have to get them, arrest them, and send them back. Because um, I get a lot of times I hear students tell me, well, I heard, you know, state slaves would escape from the south and go to the north, and then they would be, like, free. But sometimes, like, they would send, like, bounty hunters and people like that to capture them. You know, how did that happen? Why did that happen? Why is that allowed? This was part of it under the Constitution, but there's another thing called the Fugitive Slave Act, and that allowed bounty hunters to basically go into free states and capture or recapture runaway slaves. Sad thing is, though, sometimes they wouldn't capture that runaway slave. They would basically look at some, some guy going, oh, your name is Henry, huh? They're like, no, my name is Patrick. I'm a free man. I've been living as a free man since I was born a free man. No, 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 no. You're... You're Henry, you're Henry. Don't give us that name about Patrick. And then they would kidnap them and take them away. So this person who was born free would be basically taken, 
into slavery. You know, so that's why bounty hunting and things like that is allowed because of stuff like this, that in the Constitution. Okay. So here's my question to you. Do you think politics is more for people with like status and wealth, you know, you know, connections? Or do you think anyone can join and run for office? You know, the, the politics is meant for everyone, you know. So what do you think? Do you think politics is really aimed for a specific type of people? Or do you think it's for everyone? Everyone should be allowed to, or everyone is meant to take part in it, things like that. It's just people don't want to. Some people do, you know. Or do you think it's just really, like, well, if you're only, if your dad was a senator, then you could be a senator. You know, you're welcome more in with us than other people, you know. So what do you think? Is politics more for people with status, wealth, or connections? Or do you think it's for everyone? All right. Tell me why why you believe this. Explain your thinking. Okay. And again, if you notice, I did not put a writing prompt on the bottom. I want to see how well you guys can start a sentence like this on your own. Okay. So go ahead. Uh, once you finish this question, you're done with this uh, lesson. So hopefully you learned something new. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, pretty soon we will be getting into the amendments, which is, again, your rights as citizens. And we're going to break it down. What does the First Amendment mean? How does it apply to your everyday life? Same thing with the second, third, you know, fourth, especially the fourth, fifth, and sixth, especially those ones. We're really going to look at those. Okay. So. With that being said, you guys, you take care, you be safe, and I'll see you guys later, okay?